We're live? Good. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the December 14th meeting of the Charlton Board of Selectment. If you could join me to rise and say in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, folks. We have a pretty heavy administrative meeting tonight, and thankfully, it's hopefully our last one of the year as well. So that being said, first up, we're doing the minutes of the regular meeting of November 23rd. I would make a motion we accept those minutes as written. Second for discussion. I second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is unanimous. Next up, community relations. That the town hall will be closed on Thursday, December 23rd and December 30th. Um, we wish everybody safe and happy holidays. 2022 dog licenses are now available at town clerk's office during business hours or online. Application can be mailed or dropped in Dropbox or payment can be made at um, the town of charlton.net. Online payments um, for, for dog licenses are now available. The fiscal year 2002 tax rate is certified now at $13.29. Bills will be mailed at the end of December and, and they will be due um, in February. Holiday hours for Casella in Oxford. Because the upcoming holidays fall on Saturdays, Casella will be closed on December 25th, January 1st. They will be open both Fridays, December 24th and December 31st for Charlton residents between 7 and, and noon. They will also be adding a container just for the cardboard. Business and nonprofit assistance uh, grants in the amount of up to $20,000 are viable. To apply, you guys can go on, a, on the town website. The application is right there. You can print it out. The, the, um, the outline for with the dates is right on it as well, so everybody uh, knows when to apply and to whom. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. And, and I want to wish you, everyone, a um, healthy and Merry Christmas. Thank you, Bash. You too. Any other comments from the board on community relations or announcements before we go to open forum? I, I would just like to, Baji did a great job on uh, adding the container for cardboard is probably, if I were to guess, is probably going to be huge. Yeah. There was a few, there's a little bit of cardboard being bounced around Charlton nowadays. <laughs> and, and nobody, and I've seen questions on social media where to put it. And so that, that's a really good, that's a good point to bring up, I think. Mm -hmm. Probably got it. And they are big, so you can fit in a bigger boxes for the furniture or TVs. Just that before it's finished. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anyone here for open forum? And no one on open forum. So we do a couple appointments. Uh, first up, we're doing uh, cultural council. Attaches a talent bank form for Angela Castianto, uh, seeking to be appointed to the to the cultural council. The Cultural Council is recommending the appointment. The expiration date for the appointment would be June 30th, 2023. I'd recommend the board make that appointment. Wishes of the board. I'd like to make a motion. I we motion. approve Angela Casanato as, as written. Perfect. Do second. It. Second. In discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Angela, welcome to the show. Next up, the oh, the public records assistant. Well, this is a nice thing for Dan and Mary. As previously presented to the board, the, board, the police department has sought to fill the position of public records assistant. Following internal posting for the position, we did receive one application. I recommend that the board appoint Board of Selectmen Executive Assistant Mary Devlin to the position of public records assistant. The hours for the position are opposite that of town hall hours. Mary is extremely knowledgeable in the field of public records management and would be a tremendous resource to the police department. As Mary would be holding both positions concurrently, the appointment would also need to include delegating each position as a special municipal employee. <coughs> Thoughts from the board? I'd only say if we are in favor of this to, I would prefer a motion that combines those two things, the inclusive of the appointment and delegating each position as the, uh, as the SMA. It, as far as the, um, if I may through the chair, Please. It, it, as far as mentioning it, it, it delegating someone as a special municipal employee, mm -hmm. what is that? What does that really entail? More for more for the people, probably. It, it's an administrative process that allows somebody to hold multiple positions within the municipality at mm -hmm. a single time, and without without being a conflict. And mm -hmm. as far as that weighs on, on. Um, 
pay equity in the scale and all that type of thing. Uh, no, no impact. impact on, no no okay. impact on that no. at all. Okay. Okay. Good question. Do I have a motion? I would make a motion we accept Mary as is, 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 I'm sure the chief is here to support it, so he's happy. He's, I am. You <laughs> are, okay. Is that again, people? I second the motion. Okay, that and, was a motion. And, uh, and, and just to be clear, that's inclusive of the appointment and the, uh, and the uh, uh, SME uh, delegation. Yeah. Cool. Any, any further discussion? Here we go. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous, Mary. We look forward to working with you over at the police station as well. Uh, you know what? We got two minutes. Let's do the ACO possibly, if possible. At the board's September 14th, 2021 meeting, you approved the request for a second assistant animal control officer. This position would assist with vacations, time off, and or illness. It would be a position that can assist the animal control officer whenever needed. Five applications were received. Two were offered interviews. The recommendation is to appoint Edward Hart of Dudley, Mass. as assistant animal control officer. This is a stipend position at uh, $113 a week. I'd recommend the board make the appointment. I just want to add, I actually saw his resume in the office. It's actually pretty impressive if you, if, if, if you get a chance to take a look at it. He's very experienced. Mm -hmm. Thoughts from the board? <laughs> Which is another nice way of asking me for a motion. All right, <laughs> asking for a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I, everyone's looking at me for motion. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would make a motion that we, that we appoint. <laughs> I have a motion from Steve. Do I have a second? second. Edward Hart to, from Dudley to uh, assistant animal control officer. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Patsy. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. And actually, some kind of sad news, but you're happy at the same time. Hi, Andrew. Let's talk around retirements, not yours. Ah, so close. <laughs> Attaches a notice from Police Sergeant Gary Wood of his intention to retire July 31st, 2022. No action is necessary for the board at this time. Yeah, for Sergeant, information. Yeah, Sergeant Wood's a great guy. Obviously, it's going to be a great loss to the department in the town. Uh, you know, thankfully, we have him around till, uh, till July 31st. So, again, Gary, if you're out there, please be safe. Uh, you know, you get a few more months. <laughs> All right, we are now up to our first appointment, 645, keeping us on, on schedule, and the Keep Charlton Beautiful Committee. Come on up, folks. Always nice to see you. We have our, for those who don't, we, we, we have a pamphlet. If you could just in, introduce yourselves for the folks at home. Um, chairman of the, what was called the Charlton Recycling Committee, and we've done a name change to Keep Charlton beautiful. I'm Joe Mahaney, member of the committee. I'm Joe, the floor, as they say, is yours. Well, I was just going to begin, though, by saying that um, the um, the new committee, um, we just had a, a nice picture of which um, is the, would be the logo. <laughs> Drew, can you get that? Mm -hmm. uh, it says Keep Charlton Beautiful, and we got a uh, Diane Dembr Dabrowski took a very nice picture of. Um, of town hall that would be part of our logo so just to let anyone know if you go to the page um, if you go to keep Massachusetts beautiful online mm -hmm. um, you'll see our we're one of like 30 odd communities that has joined them to get benefits from them um, and so that's that's why we're doing name change excellent awesome okay so I'm here to talk um, more specifically about uh, the litter problem in town and just in general trying to think about keeping Charlton a little more beautiful okay so that's kind of my concentration and I started off by including some pictures of trash along the side of the roads which we don't have to go into a lot of detail however a lot of it is probably at one of the most beautiful parts in town up on Dressa Hill mm -hmm. and it's just covered with trash the whole hill um, absolutely ridiculous I picked up that bag by the way today uh, then I um, then we segue into the traffic islands down on route 20 and 31 mm -hmm. and you can see that that <coughs> is not a great statement for the town to look at that as you're driving through um, the sides of the roads are a little bit better but then you go and you turn the page again and look at Ox look what Oxford's done mm -hmm. and it's costs a lot of money to do that I understand that but this is the thought process that we're trying to uh, mm -hmm. um, adopt here we're trying to heighten awareness of the things we can do 
to help make the town look more beautiful, be more proud of the town, and let's basically clean it up. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the, the page where I have some uh, written comments, again, this is just, uh, just looking for ideas. There's no magic potion here. I think the chief will be the first one to tell you that littering is a very, very difficult thing to prosecute, to catch somebody littering and uh, to make um, a fine stick. It's next to impossible to do. Um, I don't know how often, Chief, that you you actually apprehend somebody in, in the uh, act of littering, but I know it doesn't happen a lot. No. I, I know it's extremely difficult to do. So I'm not suggesting that this little bylaw is going to result in a lot of arrests or a lot of administrative action for anybody. All, all we really want to do when we're grasping at straws here a little bit is to frighten some people by having a bylaw and having some signage that says this is going to hurt if you get caught littering. This is not, this is not a simple stupid matter. This is going to hurt. Hopefully some people will look at that sign and say, okay, I'll litter in Southbridge. You know, I'm not going to litter in Chalpa. Whatever. I mean, the road. Not um, that we're condoning littering in Southbridge. All right. I don't want to <laughs> no, 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 I was just kidding. As my phone blows up. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I have a littering uh, bylaw that we can talk about uh, mm -hmm. after we get through this page. But again, these are just some ideas that we're working on as a committee. I just want you to know about them. Mm -hmm. So if, if we do get a bylaw or if we do get funded for um, putting up some signs, uh, then, then we will travel down that path. Also, um, this Keep uh, Massachusetts Beautiful uh, Committee, which uh, encouraged us to uh, adopt their charter with the Keep Chalton Beautiful, um, they have a program uh, for children, to teach children, I guess a one-hour session where they will come in and, um, and give a talk to the kids. So we could try to change the culture a little bit, um, get the kids to appreciate uh, what a bad thing this is, mm -hmm. and hopefully they can say something to their parents. But it, it is a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see this problem in many places over in Europe. You don't see this problem in a lot of areas out west. Um, out west, they have some very severe penalties for, for littering. Mm -hmm. But here, it's, um, it's endemic here, and uh, we need to heighten the awareness of the problem. Um, we're going we're gonna to support, support Earth Day in a big way, get more students and and residents out there to help pick up areas of town. Um, Izzy and Nina, we're looking at you, just saying. I'm sorry? No, <laughs> Izzy and Nina, we're looking at you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Both of the students. Yeah. And also, uh, the, the traffic islands in town. And I have talked to the, the state DPW, and they have said that they'll put it on their list of things to do. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know when that's going to happen. But that's a real problem. Those traffic islands are absolutely horrendous. Um, and also, you know, if we if we really stretch and we and we someday get funded to do something uh, about the uh, the sides of the roads and the islands, putting some flower beds up, like like Oxford has done, mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll look beautiful if we can find a way to do that. So, how are we going to find a way to do that? Well, when I think about the problem, and I think about we need, obviously, a tremendous amount of funds to handle it, and how we're going to get those funds. We're going to have to use our leverage when it appears. Um, all the businesses that we allow in town, to, as a convenience store, a McDonald's, a Dunkin' Donuts, a package store, there's probably 12 or 15 or 16 businesses like this that an unintended byproduct is litter. We let them in town, they make money in town, but they also cause a problem. Yeah, I don't want to say they cause a problem, but like I said, an, un an unintended consequence of their selling activity is litter. So we should be thinking about when we let those people in, what are you going to do about the litter? How, the, how, how, uh, how can they help? The, well, they could help by providing some funds. Uh, so the DPW can hire somebody all that person does is go around and pick up litter all day long. Something like that. Um, again, when the big, big companies, Walmart, Amazon, I know you guys have been picked apart by people wanting parts of that, uh, that Amazon funding. Uh, again, you know, um, will, you, will you hire a landscaper to maintain the traffic islands? 
uh, or to put flowers on the sides of the roads. Um, that costs money too. Oxford has one full-time employee in the DPW. That's all she does is take care of all those flowers. So it gets expensive. They have a truck with a watering tank on it. I bet you they throw $150,000 a year at it easy. Mm -hmm. But it's funded through the town. Um, initially, you may know or hear that there was a grant, a beautification grant, um, that uh, uh, a Webster resident uh, donated for Oxford and Webster and Dudley. Uh, and they used those grant funds uh, to the tune of about $80,000 to buy the infrastructure, buy the pots and things like that. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, um, if I get back to my thing, I'm talking about um, leveraging these businesses when we have negotiations with them. Like we were talking uh, with a garbage contractor earlier, Casella, and I'm thinking, you know, we've got we to gotta work that into our thought process that even the, even the garbage guys, they litter. You've seen those, those machines that lift that, mm -hmm. that bucket up into the truck. Occasionally, you <laughs> see trash <laughs> flying around. You know, they contribute to the problem, too. So I'm just asking that we, we think about this more because I think by creating a fund where we can actually do something like buy signage or buy an employee or hire an employee, then we can start to clean up some of this mess that we have in town. Frankly, I think it has to be cleaned up. I know you guys do too. Um, if you want to talk about one of the things, one of the things when I was, I, when we started on this six months or so ago, I went around town and I talked to the store owners, I talked to the chief, and uh, we really didn't come up with any great ideas about how we solve this problem. Uh, but the chief did mention that uh, there is no town bylaw for littering. Many towns do have town bylaws, and I think it makes it somewhat easier to administer um, a fine if such a fine happens. Uh, again, I'm not proposing this to go around fining people. I'm just proposing this so we can put up a sign that scares people and, and have some you know, credibility to the sign. So you can read through this. Uh, the state law is um, very weak. Um, it has to be adjudicated by the state co courts. It takes uh, one of the chief's offices to go down there. It's an expensive process, and you only get half of the proceeds. If you have a town violation, you go through the town clerk, all the proceeds come to you. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think that's going to happen too, too often. But I think I'd like to put a sign up that says it's a $500 fine for littering in Chalton. And there's the sign. <coughs> or something like it. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about a sign. You know those historical markers that we have in town? I'm thinking about a sign about that big. You know, something will get, catch people's eyes, something that people will look at. Put them at the entrances to all the towns. Get, get a decal that we'll put on all of the trash containers out in front of these places that produce litter. And, and maybe at, at some critical points in town, like Dresser Hill, put a sign right up there. But again, it takes money, and uh, we don't have any money yet to do this. <laughs> So, we're just asking that um, you help us in any way that you can. You think about if you can generate some funds to do this type of thing. I hope you all agree that it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. So, that's about all I have to say. Thank you, Dr. Uh, comments, questions from the board? Nina? I, <coughs> I, Steve, that you? I definitely agree it's a big problem. I do. And, mm -hmm. and and to the um, to the young ladies here at uh, come Earth Day, bring the troops. There, and, and you talk about a cultural change. Uh, we did this over the years. The best way to teach a kid not to litter is to make them go pick up trash on the yeah. side of a road yeah. for for two mornings. Two mornings eat here. That's the the things that we found. Most of it, we did it three years in a row. Most of it was nip bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awful. It, it, yeah, and, and you know, rubber gloves, and the kids were 12, 13, but there, and, you know, there are other things we found. When I see mattresses and toilets, it just, my blood boils. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think even, um, we've, we've talked about the, uh, you know, when people put mattresses beside a clothing container. 
how does that even make common sense to anybody, right? So, so maybe, maybe, maybe if we, I'd be for some type of bylaw if we, if we include the fact that, that we only allow those clothing containers in public lit places where there's a lot of traffic, where someone's not just, it, they can't be on the end of a side road where someone's just going to toss a mattress. I think it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, I don't know what our limitations are as far as a $5,000 fine. Be fine with that, but I don't think I don't know the legality of it. I don't. It's it's. Um, but it's a problem, and I appreciate what you're doing. This, mm -hmm. it's it's been bugging me for years, and and when you notice it the most, it's it's it seems to be um, in March, when we're and thinking about melts. spring mm -hmm. and the snow melts, and you look at those snow bankings, and it's all along yeah. Route 20, and it's just it's it's mm -hmm. disgusting. Yeah. Am I wrong, or does would Casella accept mattresses on a Saturday morning? There's, there's, there are several already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think anybody in town knows that. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There, the, the, there's going to be a waste ban in effect. I don't know if the Andrews are aware of that. I, you must. Um, there's supposedly in the future there's a, going to be a waste ban on mattresses um, coming up. I just listened to a Zoom <coughs> with the DEP, and it was on that that um, right now we probably you can get rid of mattresses. I would think at our Saturday drop off, but. They aren't going to be accepted into the general um, trash in the within the next year, I believe it is. I think I think Lester. Was, I ran into that recently, just for for information. It's there, there was a mattress we had to get rid of in Lester, mm -hmm. and they told us if you um, if you cut it open, rip it apart, throw the stuffing into a bag, and then throw the metal into the metal recycling bin, you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> That was yeah, not a fun job, a mattress right. that I, was not owned by us, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, that's it's what they said when, they, when this waistband goes into effect with mattresses, that that's what the person, that the companies that are paid to get rid yeah. of mattresses, that's what they do. They yeah. cut them apart into the three, three things, and yeah. that's the, their job. Yeah. And it was a dumpster, and he wouldn't take it without it. But anyway, I don't want mm -hmm. to digress too mm -hmm. far. But no, I, this is something I, I, this, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Let's make Earth Day bigger. Let's make um, April look prettier than March in yeah. Charlton and get the kids out. I don't know how you incentivize, you know, incentivize kids to do it. Um, well, kids need community service hours, so yeah, I mean, yes. that's, that's, yeah, for NHS and yeah. for sure. Yeah. So we knock off any other opportunity they have, they have for community <laughs> service hours and we leave it all on this. I'll let you do that. <laughs> no, actually, I know um, my school's NHS is looking for places to do hours, so yes. I can talk to my advisor about getting together some kids. Right, Marissa uh, DeJesus, too, who's at Bay Path, is, is mm -hmm. going to help. She's on our, our Keep Trout and Beautiful Committee, and she's going to help. But Shepherd Hill um, yeah. people, we'd love yeah. your involvement. But that's just Earth Day. I mean, th I, mean I can tell you that I have, there's people on my road that I see every couple of days out there just picking trash when they're going for their regular walks or yes. walking their dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that makes such a huge right. difference. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, I couldn't it's imagine true my children ever throwing anything out of the window. It's definitely a culture, right? I, I can't imagine, I, I don't know anybody who would actually throw something oh, out their do. window. So it's so weird to see so much trash. But I have a, a uh, I like the bylaw idea. I think there's no reason why we shouldn't have one. Um, as long as it's all legal and you know goes through the whole um, you know legal review. But <laughs> if, with prosecuting people who throw trash, if, if a, a personal, uh, say people have cameras everywhere. If somebody gets caught um, throwing the trash and they don't know they're being videoed, can that video be used? That might, might be a. Uh, um, yeah, and, it, and certainly some of the cameras are better, but as far as finding a license plate, if you see the Batmobile, it's very specific. You mm -hmm. know who it is. If you see a Ford Explorer, <laughs> not so much. You know, you're not going to be able to identify who owns that car. So, mm -hmm. unless you can get a license plate, the cameras are getting better and they see further. So, I mean, so if people, uh, people are kind of encouraged. To you know, put up their own cameras. You know, well, I think that's what a lot of people do before they do that is they do one of these. They're making sure there's nobody looking, or they're mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, we guys think we're living in a nice rural community mm -hmm. from the city. You think this is a great place to throw my mattress, you know? So mm -hmm. that's that's the difficulty. But I mean, we could put them in places, obviously. Yeah, right yeah, now the houses. Many times but the officers will go through the trash and they'll find a utility bill or something. We and you can use. And you can use, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we try to get the town reimbursed because if Jerry went down and picked it up and stuff, how many guys did he use? And we, when we go through the court proceedings, so we try to make it, you know, when it does happen. So the bylaw could technically 
So half that money, as Jim mentioned, half that money, um, or Joe mentioned that, half that money goes to the state, mm -hmm. and I'm probably more in the hole because I had to pay somebody exactly. to go. So if we have a bylaw, then then we could the fee could be based on sending somebody to go pick it up, or and, like you could you but could both you would, of them would stop because they could still appeal the decision, but more than likely they they're not going. They would just, just like but, a dog license. Very few make it to court after mm -hmm. they've gone and settled up with the clerk. She probably takes care of ninety five percent. There's going to be some stragglers that want to go to court, mm -hmm. but... I, I, yeah, I agree absolutely with everything that was said. Um, I'm very excited about the other part of it, all the uh, flowers, you know, planters <laughs> throughout the commons, and this is definitely something I'll be very happy to see, and, you know, if there's anything we can do, I hope we can do it. My question, uh, two questions. First question that I have, uh, Andrew, to you. As far as that uh, nonprofit assistance grant, mm -hmm. would that file, c could not be used in any way to shape or form for the for the committee to uh, apply? Not if they're well, getting state funding with it. I think the, the key is that, you know, because they're not a 501c3, mm -hmm. um, it'd be essentially, you know, at their town department looking for money, you could look to just utilize ARPA funds altogether just for a specific purpose. But we just have to kind of work through the process as to whether, you know, if that's, if that's a use of the funds that the, the board feels is appropriate, especially if uh, you know if this is going to be an ongoing operational cost. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your second question, Bush. And, uh, and and the grants. You said that you are part of uh, of a mass. Well, we we are going to January first. We'll be joining the Keep Massachusetts Beautiful organization, mm -hmm. and then that will be. They'll give us a, a a little web page on their site, and they also they even have a little. Five hundred dollar um, grant for um, beautification in your town to help get bees, you know, flowers, mm -hmm. so that you'll have more bees, have a place to pollinate. Uh, but they offer <laughs> a lot of assistance, and the the towns is like thirty something towns in our state that are part of this. Mm -hmm. But if you ever go to the website, it's it's and the other yeah. ones they have the for the young people. Um, it's called Talking Trash and Recycling, and the head of it, uh, Mass Keep Mass Beautiful, Neil Ryan. He'll go to the school and present this, um, this video for everyone to see and then answer questions later. So we'd like to do that in the spring before Earth Day um, with whatever school uh, people think is most appropriate, whether it's junior high, um, and then maybe the high school could do the help with um, actually getting out there, um, picking things up. Have you, one, more, so one more question. Have you, have you we looked at any private companies that want to sponsor? I mean, I see in other towns that co certain <coughs> companies sponsor roadsides and, and, and the flowers or whatever to get their name on it. Mm -hmm. Is this something that, have you guys as a? No, we haven't done that yet. It's an idea that we're, we're going to pursue, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they Farmers do that on highways, I know that. Yeah. But, but in, your, in your town, you'd think that you'd expect your town to take care of your town. But you mean like businesses? Yeah, the, you, know, whatever, you know, whoever, um, XYZ company sponsors, you know, uh, you know one of those, mm -hmm. um, you know, the roundabout era, areas with the grassy, to, to put flowers, and they kind of take care of it. I, you see it in other towns. You drive through and you see, you know, sponsored by, you know, XYZ construction yes. company or whatever. Yeah. Um, maybe mm -hmm. something like that. And it's sort of advertising. And yeah. 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 So who, who, who will come up with some kind of a numbers? Who, who can come up with some kind of a cost, an idea, and some <coughs> kind of a plan? Would that be, would that yeah, be I you? Think we'll, I think we should do that. Sure. Right. I think we we'll have to work on it. I'm sorry. Talk about, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nina? I don't know if this is like possible, but for donations, like for NHS, I know for Shepherd Hill would be more than happy to have like a donation that mm -hmm. people, students, some yeah, kind of a fund community, yeah, some sort can, of fundraiser. Yeah, uh, we can funds for things like that. So yeah, absolutely. Right, we can gift the account. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as we transition, though, like, just to make sure we're on the same page, what are the next steps coming out of this? Um, out of the bylaw? Or oh no, just in general, like in a sense, like what happens next? Because, and I'll be candid, what, what often happens is people come up with some great ideas and mm -hmm. the board throws our ideas in it, mm -hmm. and then it goes into a black hole. Okay. So it, I think we all agree that there's a littering problem in town, and I, and, and I want to congratulate your entire team on for volunteering to try to take that on. It's kind of like, you know, Sisyphus pushing that rock up the hill. Um, but what's a true tangible next step? Would you want to come back in a month or two for discussions, or what do we want to do next so that we actually have some, so that we actually have a plan? Well, I think we need a plan for funding, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not going to happen, just volunteer effort. Mm -hmm. 
as much as we'd like to think that, um, I think that's a tough road to, to hope. But um, if, we, if we can find a way to fund it, uh, that's what we should be talking about. And again, getting back to my, my other point, the only time we're going to have an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. is when we're talking to these companies about TIFs and things like that. I mean, when we have leverage, we say, we say to them, you want to come into or the, or this, the guy up on Dresser Hill, you got, you got to permit him, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would say you're responsible for a half a mile around here. You got to clean that mm -hmm. up every week. We are constricted by that, though, just by just mm -hmm. by law, meaning that it's not his property. Well, what you're saying conceptually makes sense. Legally speaking, though, we can't basically attach something onto it to say, look, realistically, we know that you, that people are going to be throwing clam fritters out the window, so you have to go pick them up. We just can't do that. Could and we, could and we and put a surcharge uh, or, or a fee on his license mm -hmm. for I per control? I'm just speaking for myself here. I would hesitate to charge businesses uh, surcharges like that, only because I want to encourage more businesses to come in, whereas I appreciate that there are nips flying out the window, et cetera, but I'm also not going to go after our local liquor stores either for that, because that's putting the onus on the business as opposed to the person committing the crime. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I can absolutely see both sides, because if you didn't have one, you wouldn't have the other. However, just from my own political philosophy, I personally have an issue with that. I understand why people would recommend it. I can't say I would support that, but again, I'm one of you know, yeah, it's, five. It's just an idea. No, absolutely, I mean, and that's and, what I'm trying to think And you're never gonna catch the people that are out there doing it. Yeah. So how do you how do you fight the problem? Or do you just ignore it? What do you do? You gotta do something. I well, really ignoring it. You gotta do something. Is not, and that's why I say, and that's where I think, you know, what I would probably recommend is, you know, work with the Board of Health, uh, because my understanding is that your authority falls in a sense that you're appointed by the Board of Health, mm -hmm. is work through them on changes to the bylaw. Because my understanding is that at least under its current form, they weren't receptive to it. Mm -hmm. So perhaps perhaps work with them to, to come up with something that they'd be more amenable to sponsor. Or you can always sponsor it yourselves, et cetera. Um, and then maybe come back with like some tangible proposals of this is what we'd recommend, you know, Pat, and like Basha, like you said, around, well, you know, here's pricing figures, or figures, figures to so say, we have an idea here's what we would need, government. here's specifically what we could discuss. Mm -hmm. Because I think your ideas are good, I just think that we need to make them a little more concrete okay. so we so we can have that discussion. But again, I appreciate everything you're doing on this. <clears throat> Thank you. With the so business, I. too, I, I agree with Bill. I happen to agree with him on that one. <laughs> I look at yourself surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I don't see anything wrong with, for example, when we when we welcoming them in town to have that discussion ahead of the time and say this is what we expect, not necessarily, you know, go the full-blown penalties here and, and why not but just just make sure that we communicate it clearly and I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with having uh, some kind of a poster or or, mm -hmm. or, or yeah. anything on that specific business on the, uh, especially on uh, the ice cream yeah. on the dresser hill I mean yeah obviously maybe there, there will be a place that they can put mm -hmm. some kind of a verbiage you know, absolutely I agree with that mm -hmm. in, or, yeah. or, or it might just be simply verbiage in a trash barrel yeah, something's funny. It doesn't arrow. have to be very <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, a lot of this people eat up there. Up. I think it's more like yeah. when you, it's more the drive and go, kind of Dunkin's yeah. and, and, but I, it's culture, it's signs. I, I absolutely. Yeah. We're and, about 10 minutes over. I just want to make sure that we. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 what what I probably recommend <laughs> is early Q1. You want to come back to us. Okay. Uh, long, uh, maybe with some tangibles. The only reason I mention that is that, even though it's bizarre to say, even though we just we, even though we just finished our last town meeting, we're going to be discussing the warrant for like the next one, mm -hmm. come uh, come Q1. Okay. So if there are you know specific things that you you know budget wise or like anything else, let's have those conversations sooner than later. Well, with the by a bylaw idea, would that go on the town warrant, and does that go through you first? Uh, so short answer: um, the board of selectmen approves the warrant. Mm -hmm. We can sponsor our own items. However, what I probably recommend is that again, I don't want to get into a turf war with the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. I'd probably recommend that you try to work through them first. In the absence of that, you could have a different board sponsor you, mm -hmm. or uh, potentially just do a citizen's petition as well. Generally, when it comes to the uh, appointed boards like this, mm -hmm. you pr normally protocol says that you go through your mm -hmm. your your appointing authority. That's not always a, a steadfast rule. So okay. if the rest of the board disagrees with me, that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. But that'd be my advice. Okay. I'd probably try that first, and then, um, oops, sorry, and then we could just play through it after that. Okay. 
I, but, I, but short answer, yes, it, it ultimately has to go in front of town meeting. Yeah. And one last thing, <laughs> working on the numbers, if we can use the local businesses for that nursery and I like, mm -hmm. it would be awesome. Steve, Steve, final thought? Final thought is, is you mentioned you, you don't want to see, well, we don't want to see this fall into a black hole. I definitely don't want to see this fall into yeah. a black hole. So I hope everybody can work together right. on this. We're gearing up for spring on this. We really cool. think of yeah. pushing education and mm -hmm. community involvement and the thought that maybe a bylaw would firm everything up mm -hmm. is what yep. we like. Yep. Yep. It's a good, uh, if everybody, Board of Health, Board of Health has been extremely busy the last couple of years. Yeah. This year hopefully might be a little easier, maybe not, but. I'm as glad we, you guys are here. Look at John's Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Joe. Seriously, <laughs> Joe, we appreciate it. Next up, and I apologize for the delay. We're talking board health. Uh, I wish I could say this was going to be a fun conversation, but uh, John, you up? We're talking Gould Road, Cemetery Road, and the also the capping of the landfill. Hey, Matt, what's going on? So we'll take them in order. Is that it? You know what? Whatever makes you happy. Uh, <laughs> I want to make you guys happy. <laughs> How much time do we have? To make you happy, not that much time. <laughs> <laughs> no, how much time do we yeah. to go through it? Ah, you know, if you can do it in 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Gould Cemetery Road. So Andrew was on the DEP call on November 17th. Right? It was a long call, as I recall, mm -hmm. an hour and a half or so. Mm -hmm. And I took some notes. So let me just briefly go through this. Hopefully anybody who's listening and folks here in the audience will get uh, the gist of what's going on. Um, first of all, Mark Baldy, who was our uh, um, representative from DEP, who was our liaison and, and the man in charge is no longer in charge of somebody else called Mary, I'm sorry, Amy Sullivan. Um, so she is the uh, site manager. Um, the whole issue here is MTBE, uh, additive and gas, which was outlawed by Massachusetts in 2016. I was surprised. I thought it was before that, but um, there's another um, something called TBA in um, in some of the water samples too. It's a T butyl alcohol. First time I had heard of that. Uh, the biggest takeaway from the call and uh, the findings from all of the research that was done is that the well samples in the area have never exceeded DEP safe water drinking standards and the concentrations have remained stable or are declining with time. Not my words, this is, um, I don't know if it was Mark or somebody else who said that. Uh, they went into some really technical stuff that just went way over my head. They were talking about something called carbon 12 versus carbon 13. Um, but the bottom line is that um, ExxonMobil was determined not to be the cause of the contamination from the wells in that area. Um, and. and it wasn't just um, the uh, the experts that uh, Exxon Mobil hired. It was also uh, a peer consultant from DEP, and um, we ran it through um, CMG Environmental Services, Gary Magnuson, and everybody's in agreement. It's it's uh, unfortunately, I guess, for for people who are looking for a, a, a fix for this, it it's, was determined that, that they were not. Um, they were not the, uh, the, the site. So discussion then went um, around uh, areas of the uh, Coptic Church. Uh, DEP went out there, did some limited investigation on, sus on a suspected area of where the uh, an underground tank may have been. No findings um, discovered at that site. The tank was probably fuel oil, not gas, and would not be a significant source of MTBE anyway. Um, so as of now, DEP will not be undertaking more investigating regarding Gould Cemetery Road unless someone comes forward more, with more information. Um, another interesting fact, uh, one of the engineers, I believe, said that this could have been possibly only a five to 10 gallon spill of gasoline. So somebody just literally like dropped a five gallon gas of, a, a can of gas over and it just spilled into their lawn and made its way. I mean, it, they, they said it's entirely possible could also be a diesel fuel spill. So the residents, of course, are still looking for some sort of, if not resolution, some sort of action plan going forward. Uh, they asked if the uh, town, whether it's the Selectman Board of Health, would continue to work uh, with the uh, affected wells to maintain clean drinking water uh, and have somebody monitor wells one to two times per year, which, of course, is a cost 
this is this will be an ongoing uh, discussion with our board, I'm sure. And actually, this is also on the agenda for January 4th for our Board of Health meeting. So we'll have, I'm sure, people, if not in person, it may be a Zoom call because of the way COVID's going. But, but it will be on discussion for January 4th. There's some other interesting things. Somebody brought up that there's a rail line with, uh, within 100 yards of some of the houses that were affected. I don't know the area that well. I mean, I've been over there a number of times throughout my 30 plus years here in town. But um, so this, this will be another point of discussion going forward. Um, our engineer, Gary Magnuson, actually said, you know, there's, there's certain things that we can do. We could, we could look for suspected sources, but you look at a map of the area and it's just, it's pretty extensive. You'd have to now go to property owners and say, okay, folks, can we come on your property and investigate and start drilling holes and so forth mm -hmm. on all these properties and which way do you go? Well, the engineers will tell you, you gotta go upstream from where the striations of the bedrock are and so forth, so you could kind of get a, but, you know, needle in a haystack. Um, I hate to say that, but that's kind of what we're up against for that. Uh, let me see if I've got anything else. So, Gary Magnuson's uh, had questions for our Board of Health at our last meeting. He said, you know, the question that we need to discuss going forward, do you want to find the, the source of the MTBE contamination in the area, or do you want to focus on reducing exposure to MTBE impacted water at the known locations? So again, January 4th, that's what we'll be discussing with um, some of the um, some of the residents in the area who have affected wells. I've covered most of the stuff, but I'm sure you've got something to add, Matt. <laughs> I'll just say, uh, basically, we know that the, uh, there's some houses that have um, water that's probably not uh, a, a great idea to drink. It, it is below the standard, but it is contaminated with some, um, some you know, nasty stuff in it. Um, our board, uh, while ExxonMobil was doing their thing, we just tried to be proactive, trying to make sure that that particular area um, didn't get uh, in the dark hole that you guys have been talking mm -hmm. about. So we just kind of, um, as a board, we, we just stayed on it to make sure that everything we could do as a town um, to protect those residents, and that's what we did. Um, the findings were um, that um, ExxonMobil is not, is not going to be the source of that. And like John said, it could have been uh, a 10-gallon release, could have been a car accident, they're non-reportable, it could have been anything. Um, so uh, that's the bad news. The relatively good news is all of those residents that we're aware of know that there's an issue and they're not drinking the water or have been instructed not to drink the water so um, we have as a as a board or as a town um, we have provided due diligence to the to the tune of saying listen there's a problem everybody needs to know about it mm -hmm. and our team's going to continue to notify new residents and uh, people in that area while we look for a long-term solution uh, I do think that ExxonMobil's pulling out with the, um, w the uh, water filtration systems. Mm -hmm. um, sounds to me like they may sell them to the homeowners for a dollar. I think there's two of them. Uh, if they want to keep them, it's, you know, it's paperwork, basically, if they'd like them removed. Um, and like John said, we're kind of at a fork in the road now. <coughs> it's like, do we, do we continue to chase where it came from? Do we try and find a solution to make it better for those residents on the drinking aspect. And uh, so that's where we're at now with it. But mm -hmm. um, all in all, we did what we could, but it um, doesn't look like we're gonna get a free water line down down mm -hmm. that area, so. No. You know, I think it's, I was on that call for a bit, and it's one of those great examples of correlation does not equal causation, in that I think when everyone first heard about this, all of our ears perked up and said, oh, it's gotta be Exxon. Yeah. And come to find out, you had a bunch of brilliant scientists in that college, all like mm -hmm. you. I'm like, within 30 seconds, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, you know, type of thing, because it was all advanced organic chemistry, and I was like, look, just no. Um, but I think it was like three different, three different studies or, or different analyses all pointed to the same conclusion, i.e., it wasn't Exxon. Correct. So we don't know, to your point, no one knows what it was or is. We have to figure out what it is, and it sounds like you're having your meeting on January 4th, was it? Yes. January 4th, you know. I would recommend everyone dial in, have a conversation, and then honestly, we just have to keep in touch and figure out how we can best support. And you know, again, talking about next steps of 
what do we do next as a larger community but you know i'm not going to step on your toes with this you guys know know more about it than we do so you know you you give us the recommendation and then we'll you know hash it out okay and i i'm sure jim is in uh in contact with Andrew also on uh, anything of significance with this, so you you will be kept in the loop. Mm -hmm. As Andrew looks in horror yeah. at the <laughs> science that, that he has to figure out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, really, the uh, the the real it's like what can you do, right? Well, it's really going to be um, to provide some type of funding down the road to mm -hmm. have. Uh, certain uh, wells tested, yeah. whether it's residents that say, yeah, go ahead, test mine, or we, you know, I'm not saying drill a well, but I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll find a well that we can test. Yeah. But it's, we're going to have to, you know, kind of be diligent and get on some type of schedule. Mm -hmm. um, our team, the Board of Health, uh, we tried to do that on um, at the landfill right. on Burlingame Road. And we, ha we had, like, uh, target houses that we thought could be in a potentially hazardous zone. So we, we chopped them up into one, two, and three, and we, we test the ones on one year, the twos the second year, and nobody wanted to do it. We got one resident out of nine. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't, didn't most folks say no at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. And okay. we did get to test one. Yeah. That one house came up uh, clean with yeah. no contamination. Um, so, you know, the board was, again, trying to stay ahead of it. Um, then we have Flint Road, which is on the high side of the landfill, and we're having hits on that. So, um, you know, which is another story. So, our board is on top of it. Uh, we know what's going on. We've we've reached out to all the residents. I think Jim's even knocked mm -hmm. on doors to just let people aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, at this point, it's it's not forgotten, but there's not a whole lot we can do other than come up with a plan to keep some mm -hmm. type of uh, well testing going. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I appreciate him. Sure, I speak for the board on this one. I appreciate it. We appreciate everything that you guys are doing on this. I know this one's not easy, so, well, you know, well done. Yeah. It's it's not. As, as far as, I mean, one house with a contaminated well, in my opinion, is too many, but how many are affected, do you think? So, John, if I may. Yeah, ballpark ahead. number. There's obviously. two that have yeah. filtration systems. Um, and again, both of those are below the standard, the water. The standard is 70. Both of those are below 35. I do believe one's at 30 and the other one's below that. Uh, and then I think there's maybe a handful that have uh, like trace hits or J hits, what they call. Um, but there's not, well, I guess there's quite a few. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, mm -hmm. 14 with trace, trace amounts of it. Okay. Very low levels of contamination, but again, contamination is no, contamination, I, so we're, uh, we're doing what we can to at least let everybody know it's out there. Yep. So. Appreciate that. Thanks, man. Patsy, Bosch, anything from you? Mm -mm. Izzy, you know? That's good. Cool. Speaking of landfills, let's talk landfill. Unless you have more well, you want to talk I'm, around. Th that's enough. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, any more, and my head will be spinning to get into the real technical stuff, you know, carbon-12 and carbon-13 again. Um, so landfill, uh, as uh, everyone here is probably aware, the, uh, the town approved the $2 million for the capping of, um, let me make sure I get this right, because there's two, 54, mm -hmm. the old landfill, which is not capped. Um, so this has been going on for years. I can't, maybe you'll remember when that, when that landfill was officially closed and no longer having refuse put into it. But I believe it goes back to the uh, early 80s, late 90s, uh, late 70s. Yeah, it's been mm -hmm. a long time. So DEP's been obviously monitoring this and, and we've, as a board and predecessors that, that, that came long before us have, have been aware of it. Uh, but the, uh, the DEP is getting a bit uh, louder, so to speak, mm -hmm. and we now are getting strongly hinted that uh, the capping is going to be mm -hmm. coming pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So thank you to the town and the town's people for, for uh, approving the appropriation of the $2 million. Um, we'll be working with, um, I believe it's just CMG Environmental at least to start unless they need to bring in some additional uh, experts. But We'll work with them uh, once the DEP says, okay, you got the funding, now give us a plan. So we've got most of the background now in place so that we can move forward mm -hmm. and keep DEP happy, get everything done. I don't know the timeline of this it would take. Oh, that was going to be my question, but yeah, I'm not going to know. I'm not yeah, gonna but we haven't even brought that up. Um, uh, it, it would take a while. And then, of course, it has to be monitored for, um, yeah. what is it, 30 years? Something like that. 
30 years, and that's assuming that all the testing that, that goes on over that time frame uh, comes back to their satisfaction. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's going to be a, a long haul. Mm -hmm. um, we, we won't be around probably to see the, the, the final on that. Yeah, so with, with that one, the 54 um, Flint Road, we, we kind of kicked that can down the road for years and years and years. And um, there was a clause in there at one point about uh, like the old burn, uh, burn dumps, and if it was a burn dump, it may not have to be capped. And it was kind of quiet. Uh, DEP really didn't s stir up any commotion about that. We knew about it, and we didn't say anything. As they went to 90 Flint Road, we're like, well, 54 is over there, and, and it's going to be a matter of time. Uh, back when Jim Malley was on on board with us, and um, you know, we would we'd have this discussion all the time, and so now it's basically um, we we've, we've been proactive with it. We've been uh, testing those wells. There were eight or nine of them. They were so grown in we couldn't even get to them, and we've you know we've been on it. Um, but the the problem is we've had trace hits of uh, the one four dioxane on that side, and now it's caught the attention of DEP. Uh, with this action plan, we now know that DEP is um, going to make us cap it, which is the right thing to do anyways. Mm -hmm. It's just about the money, and it's always about the money. Um, so we're trying to get the funding in place so when DEP says, hey, it's time to cap it, this is what you need to do, we're not caught short, and basically the town of Charlton uh, remains in full compliance mm -hmm. at all times. So that's where we're at with it. We're, we're proactive on it right now. We don't know exactly you know what is going to happen um, as far as uh, time frame or what they're going to make us do and um, who knows it could be an opportunity for our town to be able to do something there maybe we could put solar on it maybe there's something we could do uh, we could take in this um, calm material and um, you know maybe make some money as a town if we wanted to talk about that uh, with some uh, it's it's a, not a dirty dirt, but it's a light dirt, and they, they put a, uh, a lightly contaminated dirt, and they put that on landfills. So there's a lot we can do as this unfolds, but um, for right now, we're just trying to stay ahead of it. Mm -hmm. so. now, 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 now that the DEP knows that we've got the money available, now they'll be yeah. probably calling Jim next week. <laughs> but I think this one was a good example of our respective boards working along with FinCom to, Matt, to your point, to be more proactive on this. Because the last thing we wanted to be A is out of compliance and B is something DEP ble breathing down our necks. Yeah. So what are you guys doing right now? Yeah. Well, At least we have a plan. And now in a sense we're waiting on DEP, which is odd. Uh, but it's a nice position to be in because now we can all work together and say, look, we took care of this. We have the money. Let's figure it out together. So, you know, kudos to you and Jim and, you know, obviously the, the entire Board of Health team for on that. Well, I, if, if you don't mind, um, when we originally capped the 90 mm -hmm. Flint Road, the old landfill, um, we had a FAM, it was a financial mechanism to cap that. So when, when it finally came time to cap that, um, we had, we had this, the funding source to do that. And that didn't go well for the town at all. And um, they sent me, I was the newest member of the board, and they sent me down to the floor to ask for $2 million back in the day. I love the fact that you were a second official lamb. That is fantastic. <laughs> so uh, we've learned from that, um, you know, uh, it, that was that was a rough experience. We had a we had a really hard time with that landfill. It was, um, you know, I'm glad that one's behind yeah. us. So yeah, that's not going to happen again. This time we're ahead of it. So well, well done. <laughs> Comments from the rest of us before we. Mm -hmm. John Matt seriously, thank you <clears throat> along with uh, Pete for everything that you guys do along with Jim. So anything we do to help, let us know. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank, thank you. All right, next up, we are a few minutes behind, so I apologize to the petitioners, but we're doing a public hearing. So please be advised the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, December 14th, 2021 at 715, the Charlton Town Hall, a Selectman's Meeting Room, 37 Main Street, Charlton Mass, 01507. To act on a request by Attorney, forgive me, is it Kyle or Kiel? Kyle Becker. Kyle, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Attorney Kyle Becker, oh, sorry. My, uh, uh, sorry. My power's back on. All right, to act on a request by Attorney Kyle Becker on behalf of Incom Inc., 294 Southbridge Road, Charlton Mass, to remove 10.02 acres of land located off Southbridge Road from Chapter 61, Charlton Mass, for leases shown in plan entitled Proposed LNG Facility Site Boundary, Assessor's Map 62-A-6. Anyone interested should appear at the date and time specified or submit concerns in writing. Public hearing is open. Kyle, let me turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think you had a great summary, just in the public notice in itself. 
Uh, all we're requesting is that 10 acres of currently 62 acres of 61 land be allowed to be reclassified. Um, as part of that, uh, we do need to request from the Board of Selectmen a waiver of the right to purchase. Um, this is in itself a 30-year lease with two consecutive 20-year um, periods in which they can tack on uh, an extension. Um, over the 30 years, roughly $1,440,000 will be paid in rents, which is the amount uh, which we would request if the option to purchase uh, be executed for. Um, with that being said, I think everyone is already aware of the LNG proposition. Um, and uh, if anybody has any questions, we're happy to try to facilitate them to the best of our ability. Um, however, again, this is just simply a request to remove the 61 land. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, so this is our standard 61. Um, all of the boards that we um, queried, none of them had a majority vote to exercise the right of first refusal. So if there are questions for Kyle, uh, we can have them now. I think we already went over details on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's no reason for us to have the meeting. Cool. All right, hearing none, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? I second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. Aye. That is unanimous. Public hearing is closed. Let's take a vote either way, please. Again, the motion would be to not exercise the right of first refusal. Okay, I make a motion to not exercise the right Thank of first refusal. Thank you, Vice Chair. We'd like to have a second. I second. Thank you, Basha. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that's unanimous, you guys are all set. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, Thank board. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Go. See you soon. All right, let's talk new business. Uh, license renewals by the Board of Selectmen, now that we are back on track for time. All right, attach the list of licenses to be renewed by the Board of Selectmen for year 2022. The Building and Finance, or er, Fire Departments are recommending approval of the liquor license renewals pending the resolution of outstanding inspection items. Police Department has given their approval. It's recommended that the board approve the 2022 license renewals as presented, pending all paperwork and fees are received. And just for the folks know at home, we're talking like 70 or 75 of these things. So it's it's literally anyone with like a license ultimately in town, it gets renewed every year. But but we go through them to make sure that all the paperwork's proper, there haven't been any, any significant issues, things along those lines. So any discussion by the board on this one? I, I do have a question. And, and, and based, based on the, just one memo here from a building commissioner where he said the fire and building have, committed, have completed all the required inspections. Some of the businesses have outstanding items. Captain Carson will visit these businesses with outstanding items the week of December 6th. That, to me, that seemed a little vague. I don't know what that, do we have any idea what those issues are? Is it? Well, maybe something as small as, you know, there was a back door that was blocked with mm -hmm. garbage and they need to, you know, cheat, you know, I guess rectify okay. the issue and come back for a reinspection. Um, but essentially, prior to this meeting, uh, they had at least gone to all of the businesses for an initial inspection with only a few, you know, probably nothing that couldn't be re remediated before the end of the before the mm -hmm. end of the calendar year. Okay. And his recommendation is the selectmen approve all licenses pending the resolution of the outstanding inspection items on mm -hmm. December 14th. I just wanted to make sure that as long as it's not anything major, I mean, if you, 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 we certainly want to be fair to the people that are following all the rules mm -hmm. for the licensing. And if, and if it's an egress issue or something major, but it was very vague. If he could, in the future, if he can get a little more detail on what that. It, it, it was, it, in my opinion, it was a little vague. We don't, we don't outstanding items. That's all it said. Yeah, Andrew, let's put that down for next year to give yeah. this to kind of asterisk those that have issues and just to give us an elevator speech around, you know, here's what the issues are, here's what the plan is to fix it. Yeah. We don't necessarily need to know who. We just want to know what it is, that's in my opinion. Cool. Anything else from the board for discussion? Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve um, all the licenses on the list. Pending the resolution of the outstanding inspection. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Luck. Do I have a second? Pending the resolution of the items, outstanding yeah. items. I yes. second that one. Okay, I'm going to go bash on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say for discussion, I am abstaining from any votes on the on the, on the quarter keg pub, um, but outside of that, I'm fine with everything else. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is unanimous with my abstentions on the QKP. All right, uh, temp department assistant. Uh, 
Uh, Andrew, you want to talk us through this? Sure. Uh, so with the assistant town clerk currently out on extended leave, election worker Gene Vincent has filled in to assist the office in, in his absence. In general, Gene has been able to provide at least 15 hours per week of coverage to the office during this time. As it's unclear how long the assistant town clerk will be out, I am recommending that the board appoint Ms. Vincent to the position of temporary department assistant during this period. It had been uh, discovered, although that Ms. Uh, Vincent has held multiple positions on the planning board and within elections previously, the board had not taken the action to designate those positions as special municipal employee. I re recommend that the board make the appointment of Ms. Vincent to the position of temporary department assistant and designate the positions of department assistant, election worker, and planning board member as special municipal employee. Thoughts of the board? I think it's been happening for a while mm -hmm. anyways, and it makes sense. All right, do I have a motion? I, I, th I think my, qu my uh, question would be, does this, maybe this question is more for Karen, does this, um, <clears throat> does this mean Gene would be able to fulfill the duties that Eric did, or? No, from, not, no. not um, full assistant town clerk duties. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Mm. All right. Do I have a motion? So Either moved. Way. I have a motion, Vice Chair. Would like to have a second? Second. Second. Steve. Discussion. Here we go. It's a favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. Gene, keep up the good work. Next up, we're declaring surplus of bicycles from I think 1936. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you want to walk? What's the elevator speech on this one? All right. Uh, Police are requesting four bikes and two bike racks uh, to be deemed as surplus property. They're about 23 years old. We're going to look at to put them on municipid for a minimum of $100 a piece. Perfect. I saw I'm sorry, cheap, $100 for all four. I saw Chief Dowd. It's one of those enormous ones with, 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 with like the big wheel and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chief Dowd was going on the street. You mean hook them to the horse? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, did, but did you look at the name brand of these bicycles? I did not. Like Wizard of Oz. I, I should know. Smith and Wesson. Who would think? Look Smith us. and Wesson. Oh. It's, it's not a Schwinn. Wow. It's a Smith. They're all Smith and Wesson. We can Wesson, have a kiss speaking of the litter. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I will note that this decaling has been removed um, from, the, from, the, from the... Did they take off the uh, little blue lights on the front of it? Yeah, it's cheap. Right? We can have the kids, you know, on those bikes picking up the litter. No, they go off a surplus. Look, I'm trying to bring money into the town. <laughs> That's good. It'll buy a flower pot. Exactly. Right? There's a flower pot. They can save on them, um, you know, new oh, employee. Killing me. For the, <laughs> Just the trash picking. Do I have a motion either way? <laughs> yes. Uh, so I will, moved. I, 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 so, so I, second. Thank you very much. So this is to declare him as surplus. Uh, any further discussion? Can we know as a favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that's unanimous. Chief, get rid of those. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be like a big auction yeah, like exactly. in the town yeah. common. Yeah. Yeah, 100 <laughs> bucks. No, it goes actually, at, at, there actually is a formal process. It goes on uh, municipal. Is that right, Chief? Yeah. All right, uh, Andrew, uh, let's, I know we have a small amendment to the ARPA plan uh, under old business. Yeah, uh, so basically, elevator speech, just looking to, for an amendment to that phase one plan to authorize 90000 of the funds to be appropriated for public safety mm -hmm. uh, core network upgrades uh, to be facilitated by Jeff. I don't know, Jeff, if you want it, to give any additional information. Um, but, you know, we had been looking at mm -hmm. appropriating some money toward I IT infrastructure, and we think that this is kind of like the best, uh, you know, best initial use of some. Jeff, talk to me. 30 seconds. We'll Good evening. Yeah. So the core updates to PD and fire will facilitate a few things that they solve a few problems. One is a speed upgrade, mm -hmm. connection between buildings, uh, ten, 10 times increase in speed. Two, it's also with the new um, radio system that's going to be implemented, it's going to help a lot with that. Third is cyber security, and actually the fourth would be uh, a second backup fiber connection between PD and fire together, mm -hmm. rather than hub from town hall to each building. They'll have a backup as well. Questions for Jeff? Well done. Uh, thoughts from the board? Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'll take that as a motion. Do I have a second? <laughs> this, this, this goes, this, so this 90,000 goes on top of that, the 2.1 yeah. that we've already, so we're still. Correct. Correct. So but we're well but below the floor. Yeah, we are well below yeah. what, what yeah. we no, need to No, no, I'm, I'm So wait, Vice Chair Whitlock is a, um, is a motion. Steve for second. Any discussion? Three, none. All those in favor? Aye. 
Right. Right. It was that unanimous. Andrew, I do want to give a shout out, or actually, I'd ask you to give a shout out yep. to our legislative partners. Yes, so I was made aware that there was a $50,000 earmark for the town of Charlton and the Massachusetts um, legislature's ARPA bill that was just passed yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, that was for the implementation of, a pa of the paperless document management system that we had uh, put in, or that we had funded initially. So we, we, we are starting to at least look at that. Um, but really just wanted to thank our legislative delegation, uh, you know, all of our representatives who got this into the bill and then made sure it got through through um, the legislature and mm -hmm. into passing. Mm -hmm. so. Speaking of which, very briefly, I've been in contact with State Senator Fatman's office um, as well as Representative Durant's office. The home rule petition has been filed for the removal of uh, police from civil service. It's going to be a while before it actually happens. Uh, April probably at the earliest, but well, this is all coming round in that uh, we've invited Representative, pardon me, State Senator Fatman to come in to introduce himself over the next month or so. So just kind of tying that up under rule business. Jeff, you're good. Thank you. Chief, you're good too, apparently. Oh, what's it? We're done. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to hang around. No. 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 Uh, you want to delay police contract till after exec? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to talk in exec session around police contract, and then we're going to come back out more than likely to take a vote, just so everybody knows. You need to get the contract. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the rest will go quick, I promise. Uh, we have no BOS committee reports. We have no BOS policy reviews. Any questions on Andrew around his TA goals? No. No, cool. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk to the to the fun part of the evening. Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, baby? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, school happenings. The yearbook is underway. Senior quotes are due into Miss Wilson by January 14th. Progress reports come out on Friday the 17th and Gray's closed today. The Minuteman shop is open for curbside pickup for school merchandise. I know a lot of people were asking about um, buying school merchandise for uh, Christmas. And the store website is underway also and is in the process of waiting for approval from our business office. Um, freshman students have one more exploratory until they pick their official shops. They choose their shops the week after January 7th. This year, freshmen and sophomore students have the opportunity to choose our brand new shop, Veterinary Technologies. Um, between now and Christmas break, teachers are now are competing in a holiday wall transformation. Each teacher has the opportunity to decorate the walls outside their classrooms with a seasonal scene for the chance to win a prize. My shop is doing one also. It's turning out pretty well. If I do this myself. <laughs> turning into a politician, right? <laughs> um, Teacher of the Month nominations are open for the month of December, and students can use the QR codes located around the school in order oh, cool. to nominate their favorite teacher. Sports recaps. The boys' uh, varsity v basketball team won their opening home game against North Brookfield last night with a wide sports sp point spread of 78 to 28. Ooh. Good job, boys. Ooh. The girls' varsity team also won their first home game in a nail-biter against North Brookfield. It was a tough matchup, and the score ended up 29 to 28. Good job to both teams. Uh, for extracurriculars, indoor track meets have now been postponed indefinitely due to COVID. Uh, practice times are changing from being until 4.15 to every day to only being until 4.15 until on Monday and Thursdays. And then on, until 3.30 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then we have off on Fridays. NHS has moved their induction ceremony to the winter to now the spring of 2022. Mm. Dates are to come. Uh, Bay Path Drama Club is presenting their talent show tomorrow, Wednesday the 15th. So if anyone would like to attend, <laughs> that is going on at our school. That's pretty cool. That's all. Well done. Merry Thanks. Christmas, Thanks. everyone. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Well, questions for Izzy? Hearing none, that means that you made a good report. <laughs> Great. All right, mm -hmm. Nina, up to you. And remember, it's not a competition. But no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be voting later. <laughs> Okay, well here at Shepherd Hill, it is also time to think of those who are less fortunate. So our National Honor Society has concluded its annual Thanksgiving food drive. So turkeys, canned goods, and all the money um, was used to purchase other essentials for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving dinner, we collected from students and faculty to create baskets for our local families in need. So now that turkey season is over, we're moving on to <laughs> the holidays. So NHS is also concluding, well, almost concluding their toy drive. So the National Honor Society is collecting new unwrapped toys and donations until Monday, December 20th to give gifts to children in our community and the surrounding communities who may not otherwise receive it on any other holidays. So donations can be brought to the main office at Shepherd Hill or please, or you can um, contact Mr. Stefan 
at cstefan at dcrsd if you have any questions or concerns about any gifts or anything. So moving on to some of our clubs. So the Gender Sexuality Alliance, the GCA, meets every Wednesday after school, and the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network attended one of the recent meetings to speak with them about their weekly programs. And so in December, we are now introducing 10 new LGBTQ plus books being added to the school library, and we are now, and we were able to do that through the Glenson Rainbow Library, so thank you. And so for ski and snowboarding clubs, so now that it's December and hopefully some snow will come. Don't so ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, for the skiers. So for all the skiers and snowboarders, our ski club signups are now open, so make sure you email Mr. Cormier at tcormier at dcrsd for any questions. And so our Shepherd Hill Drama Club is now presenting Alice Wonderland in the Glass, which is being presented Friday, January 7th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, January 8th at 7 p.m. So tickets are $15 for adults and $10 for students and seniors, and kids um, five and under are free. And more ticket information is coming soon, not yet available. So moving on to super fun stuff, our AP test payments. <laughs> so <laughs> please send in any payments for AP exams prior to January 21st, 2022. So check or money orders must be made out to Shepherd Hill Regional High School, and College Board has set the prices for exam as follows. So exams are $96 per class, and for AP capstone classes like AP seminar or AP research, it's $144 per class, and um, for AP physics, C classes is $192, and all of these prices are reduced if you have free or reduced lunch students. So congratulations to our academic decathlon team. They had their first um, competition on November 20th at Arlington High School, and they placed fourth, so well done team. And starting our soup food drive so we have january 9th at 2022 we will host a drive through soup drive and so stay in tune for the link and for your pre-ordered hot soups on the <laughs> cold winter nights and just finally for the whole dudley charlton district we are in desperate needs of subs so if anyone's interested in subbing for any of the schools in the district please contact any of the schools you're interested in and any information is there if you need to contact the school they'll help you with that and that's it and i just wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday thank you nina you too thank you. questions for comments for nina christmas gifts exactly yeah, 160 yeah. per ap exam right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> for me actually <laughs> 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 no it's 144 not 160. Uh, <laughs> 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 i'm not an ap not AP physics, I'm an AP research. Oh, that was the worst class. <laughs> so we were joking around uh, prior to the meeting around college selections and things like that, but in, but in all seriousness, I'm glad I'm 30 years older than you now because <laughs> um, there's no way I could compete with either one of you. You're both doing a fantastic job, and we're really, really happy to have you on the board, and I really, I mean, granted, you used to have six more months with us, but I, or however many more months, I, maybe four or five, I don't know anymore, uh, but I can't wait to see, like, what you guys do in the future. Like I said, you guys are both doing a great job, so thank, thank you. you so much. And thank you are you know really promoting your schools very well and it's just like I said they should be proud of you as well thank you I, I agree we're happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. suck at that motion wait till budget season you basically <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go uh, TA report Andrew yeah real quick so um, just wanted to thank everybody who put together the uh, tree lighting in Santa parade uh, last week it was a great event great turnout um, you know, I brought my family out here on a, mm -hmm. on a Sunday, and uh, they, they really enjoyed it. So really just want to say kudos to everybody who volunteered to put that together. Mm -hmm. um, and then just as a reminder to the board, uh, this is our only meeting this, this uh, month, so happy holidays. Uh, great working with you all this year. Uh, more to come, and we down and dirty work starts next month. Right. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, any other business that the board wants to discuss legally? Cool. All right. Again, as Andrew mentioned, next meeting is going to be in January. We're going to go into executive session. There's a good chance we're going to take votes when we come out of it. Uh, it. We probably won't be in it for long. But what I'd like to do is have somebody read the motion from page two of the agenda. If you have it, please. Yep. Great. Want me to do it? Please, Matthew. Um, 
I'd like to make a motion to adjourn, um, go into executive session under MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. The police contract and um, clerical union is an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares and to re reconvene to open session to take any action if needed to adjourn. Thank you, Patsy, and the chair does declare. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Steve? Aye. Basha? Aye. Patsy? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are in executive session, but again, more than likely, we are coming out for a vote. Or at least, I would assume we are. All right, uh, let's take five minutes, and then we'll uh, go through this. Recording stopped.